YouTube, what's going on? It is Dominic Arena. I am back with another DGA Live. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Miss Chris is actually behind the camera today. She's helping me film this video. So I'm going to do something I haven't done in about five years. I was in a forum. I was BSing with some guys about guitar tube amps. And the question came up is, hey, what's a good solid state guitar amp? And... Um, Immediately, everybody started dogging on solid states. I'll oh, stay away from them, blah, blah, blah. And then I actually came out of the blue and said, actually, you know what? I actually purchased my first solid state amp in about 20 years new. I own a couple. I have four tube amps, and I got a handful of solid state stuff, but it's all older. This is the first new solid state amp I have purchased um, last year, and it is the Orange Crush Pro Series CR60C. I'm going to tell you why I bought this amp after being a tube guy for 20-something years. Now, for those that don't know the difference between tube and solid state, basically tube is very, very, very old technology. It's been around for almost 100 years. And something, uh, if it wasn't for the guitar companies, the manufacturer of tubes would be extinct. Nothing's really using tubes except hi-fi audio equipment and guitar amps. It's what's keeping the tube companies in business. And the reason why tubes are considered king is, first off, touch sensitivity. Um, great picking dynamics out of a tube amp. You get natural compression and sag out of a tube amp. And uh, something that solid state kind of lacks and a lot of people consider solid state amps to be brittle. Now, the reason why I wanted a solid state amp was number one reason reliability. I got uh, kind of got sick and tired of replacing tubes constantly, especially if you got an amp that has like eight tubes in it and you got to replace them. It's going to cost you a few hundred bucks. Wanted something that was reliable. And then number two, most important, I wanted something I can achieve the tones I'm looking for at a lower volume. And that's what solid state kind of excels at. So if you're a tube guy and you gig, you've probably had this happen to you. You get out to the show, you set up your tube amp, you get all your settings set and you got your volume. You're pushing that amp just enough to saturate the power tubes and get that nice compression and sag. And then what happens is the sound guy is yelling at you, hey, guitar, turn it down, all right? Now you just lost your whole tone. Only way to overcome that is with an attenuator, which is another fucking part you got to buy for your amplifier. And they can get pricey. I've seen them as high as 300 bucks. So solid state comes into mind. And I'm like, if you could find a good solid state amp, you can actually achieve a decent tone at a lower volume and then let the house do the work. So when I went on the search for solid state amps, I played all the digital modeling amps, the Fender Mustangs, the Marshall Code series, the Vox Valve Tronics, and I'm sorry to say I am not sold on digital modeling amps, not yet. And uh, then I came across this guy. And what drew me to this was the word analog. So the CR60C is 100% analog, solid state, two channel amp, no bells and whistles. So it's not one of these amps that has a thousand built-in effects, cab simulators, speaker simulators, all that bullshit. It doesn't. It's basically a dirty and a clean channel with a built-in reverb. Now the reverb is digital on it. It's not a real spring. It's a digital reverb with all analog circuitry. So let's talk about the amp real quick. CR60C. CR is part of the Crush series. 60, 60 watts, and the C is for combo amp. Now, this is the smallest of the Pro Series. The Pro Series is basically three amplifiers. You got the, the 60C, which is the smallest combo. They make a 120, which is two 12s and 120 watts. And then they make an 120 watt head, if you want to play it on any cabinet you want. So... These are made in China, and I know a lot of guys are dogging on these, saying, hey man, it's not a real orange, they're made in China, they're not made in London. You know what? I cannot find a build quality flaw whatsoever on this amp. 
18 millimeter birch ply, the same cabinets they use on their big 412s, or same wood, I should say, same exact Tolex, the black piping, the picture frame front end, same grill cloth, same amp chassis, same knobs, everything that Orange uses on their $2,000 amps into this system right here. Street price, right now, as of this video, I want to say Sweetwater has them for $550. So they're not cheap, but they're not stupid expensive. We're going to go through some tones here in a little bit, but I kind of wanted to talk about the amp real quick. So 112. The speaker that's loaded in it is a orange speaker. It's not like a Celestion or an Eminence. It is the Voice of the World Silver Label. Now, to me, this is its only flaw. Only flaw I can find is this speaker. It's not a terrible speaker, but I would have liked to seen an Eminence or a Celestion put in it. Did some digging around to try to find out what this speaker's all about. Because I've never seen a silver label. They've all been gold labels. And after talking to different reps and all this other stuff, basically the Voice of the World gold speaker is a replicant of a Vintage 30. So if you like the Vintage 30 from Celestion, you're going to like the gold label. The silver label is tuned darker. And the reason why they did that is because open back cabinet and it's solid state. Solid state tends to lose some of the warmth that a tube amp does. That's not the case here. This amp is very, very tube-like, and I'm going to show you guys that here in a minute. So this is 100% stock. I haven't swapped the speaker yet, but it will be on my to-do list eventually uh, when I come around to modding this amp. But as is, it's a, it's a great solid state amp. Now, um, another thing, too, that I'm not a big fan of, is the Crush Pro badge in the corner. This right here is a dead giveaway. If you were to see this on stage, a lot of people mistake this for a Terror 15 from, from far away. You get up close and you see this badge right here. This is a dead giveaway that it is a Crush Pro and it's a solid state amplifier. They also dumbed down the orange logos just a bit. They're a little bit smaller and they're made of a cheaper plastic compared to the uh, like enamel style badges that you will find on like the, uh, like the Terra, for example. So this amp is also voiced to sound like a rocker verb. So if you guys like the rocker verb and you don't have the money to go spend on a rocker verb, this is a great substitute being solid state. Now, I'm gonna have Miss Chris here grab the camera. I'm gonna show you guys the top panel. On the top panel here, you can see it's super simple controls. We got a clean channel, we have a preamp volume, we have bass and treble, that's the only EQ on that. On channel two, you have your gain, a three band EQ, another preamp volume, and then your overall master volume. Now this here is your, is your reverb. We have three different voicings of reverb. We have plate, hall, and spring, and we're gonna go through that here too. This right here flips it from dirty to clean, and you got your on-off button. So there's our control panel right there. You, you can go back, you're good on that. Just wanted to show you that, and I'll tell you what we're doing here in a minute. Now the back of the amp, let me take a drink here. I'm not gonna show you guys the back of the amp because all the, uh, um, all the switching and, and the jacks are actually, they're not straight at it, they're actually up in it. The back of the jack has a full buffered effects loop, which is great. It's super transparent. I've ran some uh, delays and modulation type pedals in the back end of the amp, and it's beautiful. So I'm very happy with that. Also has two ports for a foot switch. And I want to talk to you guys about that here for a second. The foot switch from Orange is actually sold separately. And it sells for about 45 bucks. It's really nice. It's a big steel casing. You got a, uh, a button for to switch between the dirty and the clean. You have a button to turn on and off the reverb. But what I have found is this is a foot switch off of my Blues Junior. These go for about $15. Super cheap one button foot switch. You could plug this into either one of the ports and have a one button foot switch. 
So like right now, um, I could give a rat's ass about having foot switchable reverb. So I have it in the channel selector and uh, it works perfectly. So like right now I'm on my clean and I click it and I get my dirty. So you can run a $15 Fender Blues Junior is the best way to describe it. It came with my Blues Junior. Um, foot switch and save yourself about 35 bucks if you don't need the uh, foot switchable reverb. Now, there's a ton of videos on YouTube floating around with this amp, and I've watched a handful of them, and everybody's talking about metal. Orange, to me, when I think of orange, I think of orange 40 years ago. I think of Orange as a classic rock amp. I remember Jimmy Page using it. I still think Jimmy Page uses it. I remember Black Sabbath in one of their music videos had a wall of Orange amplifiers. That's what I think of. But today, Orange is very really heavily used in the death metal and heavy metal scene. Bands like Clutch use it, Crowbar, Mastodon. All those bands are, are actual sponsored users of of orange amps and it makes sense this amp has four gain stages low medium high and ultra gain and it's just a shit ton of gain i mean more gain that you'll ever use now i'm not going to go here and show you guys metal tones because you could find that all over the all over the net what i want to show you is something that a lot of people ain't talking about tube like dynamics in a blues situation I want to get to that here in a sec. Now, that is very important to me when I'm buying an amplifier. So when I buy an amplifier, and the reason why I haven't purchased solid state stuff before is I don't get picking dynamics. And tubes just do it so well. They're very touch sensitive. This amp does it very well for a solid state amp. And you can actually get it to break up like a tube amp, and I'm going to show you guys that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys some tones. I'm going to now I am re, uh, tell you the guitar real quick. I am using a Squire Classic Vibe 50 Strat. It's loaded with Alnico threes, and I chose this guitar on purpose because Alnico threes are a little bit low output, so you can get kind of more of that uh, not that overly saturated sound. And uh, I'm going to play it on the clean channel. Now I am recording this into a blue. Uh, snowball mic, and I'm gonna have the I'm gonna place the mic about eh, two and a half feet from the speaker, so you can get more of a room type tone. Now remember, what you guys this is not the best depiction of audio, so what you're gonna basically be hearing is this amp recorded into a blue, played back on your speakers or your headphones. So to really get a good sound on this, you're gonna have to go out and check one out for yourself. But without further ado, let's do that. I'm gonna move this mic right there, a little bit offset. And right now, I should be on my cleans. Right there. That's a little bit of reverb on it. I got about, let's see where we're at. That's about, 75% reverb on the plate. And you'll notice that the plate and the hall are gonna sound very similar except for the tail end. So the plate has a short tail and the hall has a long tail. And just keeps going like that. And then we go to the spring and the spring's gonna have a little twang on it. Excellent reverb. I love the reverb. For a digital reverb, I think it's phenomenal. So back to our clean sound. As you can hear, it's a solid state clean. And solid states do make very pristine cleans. Um, I think one of the best solid state cleans out there is the, uh, the uh, Roland JC120. Excellent fucking clean amp.
great, great cleans. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the dirty channel. And the way I like to run this amp, like I said, a lot of people are using this amp for metal purposes. And it does metal fucking great. Don't get me wrong. But knock the gain back, okay, below half, all right? I'm running the gain about 45%. Set your EQ to taste, and uh, you're going to get more of a 70s type sound. So you get more of that crunch, that old British crunch. Let me knock the reverb down. So you get that old 70s style crunch breakup out of this amp, which is very tube-like to me, like a, like a tube amp on the just past that breakup point. Now for blues stuff, I told you I like for blue stuff and you play, uh, you like to play uh, classic blues, anything like that, you got to have that touch sensitive type guitar. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a blues riff. And then what I'm going to do is halfway dur during it, I'm going to not touch none of the volume. Volume's 100% on the guitar. Okay. All I'm going to do is change my picking dynamics and show you how the amp reacts to that. So you got... Just from me changing the way I pick the guitar, the amp's going to react to it, just like a tube guitar. So you play soft, kind of cleans up a little bit, and then when you dig in is when you get your break up. Duh. So you get that type of sound effect out of it. I have not played except for one amp, and I will give credit where credit is due. I'm not sponsored by Orange. I'm rocking an Orange t-shirt and all that shit. Not sponsored by Orange or anyway, but I will give credit where it's due, and that is the Roland Blues Cube series. It has been one of the most phenomenal, touch-sensitive, tube-like dynamics that I've ever experienced in a solid state. This right here, I think, takes it a notch past it. Instead of excelling in one style of music, being blues or whatever it may be, this is more versatile. So you can get the you can get a nice alternative sound out of it. You can get a 70s crunch out of it. You can get metal out of it. Where the blues cube kind of doesn't do that. It's a one trick pony. But uh, yeah, I just I just love that type of touch sensitive type um, picking and dynamics out of a solid state amp. Now one other thing, if you want to grab the camera one more time, one thing I want to point out is I'm going to go back to the clean channel. And as you can see right here, this is a preamp, okay? So this is your preamp volume. This is your master volume, okay? So if this is down, we ain't going to get any sound out of the amplifier, even though this is up. Now, what you can do to this particular amp that makes it very tube-like is push the clean channel as far as it goes. Set your uh, EQ to taste, and then set your volume to taste. Which I'm going to do right now. Put it right there. I don't want to blow the mic out. Now, this amp is going to sound like a tube amp on the verge of breakup. You can go back. Appreciate you. Give a big round of hand for Crystal. On the camera right there. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> As you can tell, we're not professional YouTubers. But by doing this, by pushing that clean channel... 
to its max, you're going to have that, that sound of like a Class A amplifier on the brink of breakup. Like right when you're going to hit those 12 AX7s, that's what it sounds like out of a solid state amp. So now, using your volume control, I got my clean, and if I turn it up and dig in, I'm going to build a breakup sound. Knock the volume down. I think it might be peaking the mic. So you get kind of that, just that, that hair, just a little bit of hair on it, even though you're on the clean channel. It's nowhere near as dirty as as the uh, dirty channel at 45%. But uh, that's cool that you don't get that distortion of a clipped amplifier in a solid state. You actually have that tiny bit of breakup on it, which is very, very tube-like, and what has drawn me to this amp. So, I mean, um, the dynamics are still there, so you got... I'm going to show you, put a little bit more reverb on it. Oop. Damn. Put about 75% reverb. I'm going to throw it on, actually I'm going to throw it on spring. Get you a real old sound right there. higher notes how much it projects out more um, compared to just some soft picking on it so that is it in a nutshell this is the crush cr60 like i said in the beginning of the video they go for about 550 new um, you can get you can get a cover for it and it does have an external speaker jack on it so um, orange does sell a cabinet it is a closed back cabinet matches this perfectly that this guy can stack up on top and then you can run like a 212 mini stack and I want to say that external cabs about 400 bucks that cabinet comes with a vintage 30 in it so you get a good speaker in it. it's closed back a little bit more front projection ton of volume on tap 60 watts is plenty of volume if you want to play with a drummer, I have played live with this. I've played live mic'd um, with a band, and I've played with it unmiked doing some solo shows, just kind of fucking around, singing with a guitar and a microphone. That was it. But uh, that's it. I hope you guys dug it. If you have any questions for me, leave them to uh, leave them in the comment section. I'll gladly uh, answer anything that I might have missed on the amplifier. But um, I'm sold on it. It's one of my favorite solid state amplifiers on the market right now. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Until then, peace and hair grease.